And as President Obama continued his tour of the Midwest, talking about his plans for recovery in this economy, a group of top Pentagon officials gathered on Capitol Hill to share their ideas on how to save money. The group testified in front of the Senate and House Armed Services Committee today to attempt to push forward a plan by Defense Secretary Robert Gates to cut $100 billion in defense spending in the next five years. But could it really be that easy to cut $100 billion? Well, joining me to help figure that out is Ivan Elin, senior fellow from the Independent Institute. Uh, so, Ivan, you know, it's no secret that uh, defense companies have spent thousands of dollars uh, helping incumbents campaign, especially those that are on uh, the Defense Appropriations Subcommittee and the Armed Services uh, Committee. Can you talk a little bit about that link between politicians and these big defense companies? Well, yes, and also they represent uh, a lot of constituents out there. Uh, what defense companies do, they're not like a company that works totally for the private sector in their, in their own business. What they do is they contract with the government, but they also, instead of choosing the best subcontractors to do the work for, the, for themselves, they, they distribute business around the country to putting it in states and congressional districts. So it's a very politicized industry. And what you do is you spread all of the subcontracts around the country so you have the votes for the program when it comes up, say it's a jet fighter or a tank or whatever, you can't kill that, uh, or it's very difficult to kill it because uh, they have all these uh, constituencies. It's an economic program. And of course, the, the money could be better spent uh, on other economic uh, things uh, or return to the private sector than, than defense spending. So is it possible or even realistic to think that these politicians uh, could really vote to cut defense spending when it seems like there's such a link between the two, uh, as you just pointed out? Well, there's not going to be any cuts in, at all. And uh, it, when you hear the term budget cut in Washington, you have to be very suspicious, no matter whether it's a defense program or non-defense program. Program. But what's happening here is they're going to cut $100 billion uh, out of the budget over five years. That's $20 billion a year in a $700 billion plus defense budget, which so it's a very small amount anyway. But it's, even that's not going to be cut because what they're going to do is they're trying to cut the waste or whatever so they can plow it back into weapon systems and that sort of thing. So they're actually talking about overall budget increases. So they're saying if we do this, these cuts, these waste and abuse uh, type of cuts, uh, we can uh, increase the overall budget less. So there's still going to be overall budget increases. They're just moving shells around is what they're doing. Yeah, I think it's really uh, important to point that out because you see all these headlines saying they're going to cut $100 billion in five years, which seems like a lot. But if you really take a closer look at the numbers, you see that the defense budget is actually growing 7% every year. And so, you know, in the real big scheme of things, uh, it's not that much money, as you pointed out. Uh, you know, so... I'm curious to know what you think is the point of uh, all these Pentagon officials coming onto Capitol Hill and talking about this. It's interesting to me the timing of this uh, six weeks before the elections. Well, I think what uh, Gates uh, is doing is trying to come up with some internal cuts so his budget doesn't get cut even more because, you know, there's a ga gaping deficit, federal budget deficit. There's a gaping national debt. And, of course, the economy is kind of sluggish still uh, from the recession. Uh, we're out of the recession. but So there's tremendous pressure to cut somewhere. And all other places are going to have to be cut in the budget. And so defense, he's sort of uh, immunizing himself from further cuts by coming up with what seem to be cuts but r are really just moving funds around. And it seems like when you talk about the military budget, one of the biggest reasons that it's increased so much in the past couple of years is because a lot of the work has been moved to kind of these private contractors. Obviously, you know, the percentage of uh, the Pentagon workforce that our private contractors has increased so much over the past 10 years. But many top Pentagon officials say, hey, you know, we need these private contractors because they have uh, an expertise that, you know, we can't get from anywhere else. So many Americans might think, you know, it's just really not that simple to cut military spending, spending because it'll jeopardize our national security or our mission in Afghanistan. I mean, what would you have to say uh, to that? Well, I think we have to rethink what we are as a country. Uh, the founders of the U.S. were very anti-militarist, and they didn't want to get involved in a lot of foreign conflicts. And I think after World War II, the United States just threw that out the window and has been the most interventionist country. So I think if you really want to cut the defense budget, you have to start with your foreign policy and be more restrained overseas. Uh, and you can also 
I think, uh, uh, may be more efficient in many of these things. Uh, this is a socialized industry. Uh, there's, they're ostensibly private companies, but they're really working for the state. So the market, there's no civilian market for a lot of this stuff. And many of these countries are wards of the state. Uh, and so if these companies, uh, there could be more uh, competition injected into the system. But I think the major thing is the U.S. Uh, should uh, reduce what it's doing overseas because we can't afford it anymore. And it's very counterproductive to our security because we get attacks like 9-11 that are in retaliation for us uh, meddling in various parts of the world, particularly the Middle East. And, you know, we've been talking so much about the economy, um, you know, here at RT uh, today. And, you know, it seems like there are so many Americans who want less government spending when it comes to anything. But yet when it comes to military spending, they say this is our national security. This is important. Uh, why the contradiction when it comes to the military? Well, of course, the government operates much the same way whether it's a defense program or not. Just because you call it a national security program, there's constituencies and they come in and want uh, you know, to get paid off. And essentially, uh, the de Defense Department gets paid off from both Democrats and Republicans, probably slightly more th on the Republican side. So if the Republicans take over the Senate and the House, you're going to see some of those constituencies who gave big uh, donations to the campaigns come in and say they want, uh, you know, give us our, our, uh, our, our, you know, our reward. Right. And a lot of those are going to be defense contractors on the Republican side. Not everybody, but the, but the There'll be a lot of defense contractors wanting money. And as I say, these are votes because if you cut a defense program in a, in a state or a, a, a congressional district, uh, you, the person may not get reelected anymore, you right. know, the congressman. So, uh, uh, and everybody's throwing money at programs, whether it's, um, you know, defense or non-defense right. that goes into these districts and states because the incumbents are all very scared that they're not going to get reelected. And what power do incumbents have? They have the power to bring home the bacon. So it's a, right. it's a political economy going on here. They feel some loyalty to the people who help donate to their campaigns. Ivan Elan, senior fellow uh, from the Independent Institute, we appreciate your analysis as always.